Let's talk about Spider-Man on the Steam Deck and the new Steam update is almost great. How's it going everyone? Welcome to breaking Steam Deck news. This week we have three huge stories to talk about and I just mentioned them so I don't need to go over it again. If you like these videos and you want to see way more Steam Deck content, make sure you click the red subscribe button and set your notifications to all. Last week I did a video talking about a bunch of accessories JSOC sent over and I'm not sure if that's how you say the name, but I don't really know how else you can pronounce it. So so if I am pronouncing JSOX wrong, I'm sorry. Basically, they sent over a dock. They're like five in one dock. It is three USB 3 ports, a gigabit ethernet port, and HDMI port. It's got the little USB-C cord that hangs off the side. And long story short, the dock works great. It gives you up to 4K 60. The gigabit connection is awesome with the ethernet. I have nothing but positive things to say about that dock. They also sent over a few of their screen protectors, which are great. They have a little border thing that you put on your Steam Deck, and then the screen protector is like, like perfectly easy to place. And I love all of these accessories, but I just got another box in the mail. I don't know if they sent all this stuff together and it kind of got broken up, but I got a couple more things from them. And the smallest, most innocuous, hardest to figure out accessory from looking at the box has easily and very quickly become my favorite. And you might not even be able to see it. To show you, I will need the Steam Deck charger. I'm using the JSOX one they sent over. I leave my other one plugged in at home, it's great. Here's the cord connector. Hopefully I also get B-roll of this. But you take the little thing, you put it on the end, and suddenly the USB-C charger is an L shape. Now why is this good? I gotta grab my Steam Deck, this is gonna be hard. It makes it so that the charger is like flush with the top of the Steam Deck, so it's not hanging off in that weird way and giving it tension. So now it rests nicely on the back of the device. How awesome is that? I know this isn't like an invention by them, but like it's perfect for the Steam Deck and it's something you could just add to your cart if you're buying anything else from them. What I'd really like to see from them though is a competitor to this screen cover. This one is uh, from Magglass and they've been working really hard to make sure it fits the Steam Deck perfectly. They had a little bit of drama where their first revision of this glass protector uh, didn't really fit the screen all that well, but they're letting people who got the not fitting one return it. They're also selling them on Amazon now and of just eBay, which is great. And my only gripe with this screen protector is that it kind of makes the edges of pixels look a little bit fuzzy, but overall it's great. I just think JSOX would nail it if they tackled it because every accessory they've sent over has been great in some way, except that like weird rubber skin case. I don't like those, those are weird. I, I'm sure it's great if you like those, just me personally, got a big bias against them. And just like with every other JSOX accessory, the little L bracket, it comes in a two pack, which is sweet, and you get both of them for $12.99. Now that's a pretty fair price in my opinion. I mean, I guess they could charge like six or seven bucks for it, but like what profit would they make on that? So if you wanna get a couple of those, I highly recommend grabbing that because it makes playing the Steam Deck while it's plugged in so much easier and so much more convenient because you're gonna have to play the Steam Deck plugged in. The battery life on more demanding games, like some we'll talk about in a little bit, that it just makes it so you need to be plugged in a lot of the time. And having that little L bracket or even two of them, you could keep one plugged into your charger and the other one plugged into your battery bank and you're good to go. Now the second accessory they sent over, I think people are going to really like. It's a little stand for the Steam Deck that's made of metal. It's not weighted, so it's a little bit light, but it does have nice rubber feet. So if you put it down on your desk and drop the Steam Deck on there, it's not gonna be like flipping and sliding all over the place. It'll stay solidly where you want it to be. It's got the same build quality as their dock. Obviously it's just the dock without the ports and maybe a little bit smaller. And this thing's also pretty fairly priced right now they're selling it for $16.99, but it's normally $18.99. I actually pre-ordered one of the five-in-one docks like a long time ago, and I realized when the new one came in that they sent me, I was like, yeah, I never got that in the mail. So I went and I checked. Not only did it show up the next day, they also refunded me for like half the price I paid for it because uh, they took too long to make it. They said it was going to ship out at a certain time, and it didn't, so they refunded people a little bit of money to make up for it, which I think is going the extra mile, and not many, or really any other companies would do that. So even though they sponsored a video, which makes me kind of biased and they send me all this stuff, uh, I really like JSOX and uh, every accessory I've used from them has been great. So the one I love the most is definitely that little L-shaped bracket. Highly recommend it. If you need a stand, I think this one's really good as well. And then finally, as far as I'm concerned, their dock is just unbeatable at this point. And since it has the exact same ports as the official Valve dock, if you just want to get in early and grab that now, it's only 50 bucks and I think it's definitely worth it. We have no idea 
idea when the Valve One is coming out or how much it'll cost. And I have no reservations recommending this one. Next up, let's talk about Spider-Man. I have been extremely curious about how this game is going to run on the Steam Deck because it's Spider-Man Remastered. If it was just the PS4 version, that'd be one thing, but they are porting over the full-fledged PS5 version of Spider-Man with ray tracing included. So because of that, I was a little bit nervous about how it was going to run on Steam Deck. But thankfully, when they sent the PC codes out, a lot of websites and YouTubers like SkillUp, he talked about it in his video. Digital Foundry hasn't done their full analysis yet, and there's a couple other websites out there who have tested Spider-Man. And across the board, all of these different sites are impressed. Now, Digital Foundry, the reason they're waiting to do their PC full breakdown is because Insomniac and Nixes are still patching the game game pretty regularly, so they want to make sure all the big day one patches are in before they do a full performance review. But regardless, the Steam Deck version of this game, or the PC version running on the Steam Deck, seems to be largely really good. So I noticed in SkillUp's video, he was trying to get it to run at 45 frames per second at 45 hertz, and it didn't really work out all that well. It was basically running between 30 and 45. Now, depending on how sensitive you are to frame rate flying all over the place, that should be playable, but I think for me, I'm gonna try and get it to run at the highest settings possible and also lock it at 30 frames per second. This seems to be like a God of War situation or a Final Fantasy VII remake situation where you're going to be able to run it at 40 frames per second at 40 hertz, but you're going to have to make some major sacrifices in the graphics department to do so. And I don't think personally that's going to be worth it. Now, to be fair, I haven't actually played the game on my Steam Deck yet and a lot of the footage I saw was blown up on my computer screen so it wouldn't look great as is. But regardless, this game game does utilize dynamic resolution and it kicked in pretty hard for skill up trying to run the game at 45 FPS and it still wasn't natively hitting that all the time. And the dynamic resolution scaler in Spider-Man is super, super aggressive. So if you can avoid using it, I think you should go for settings that don't really make it kick in. Thankfully, from what I read in Digital Foundry's report, if you run the game at around 720p at high settings-ish with some things dropped a little bit lower, you should be able to get a pretty fairly locked 30 frames per second, which puts it generally on par with what you're going to see on the PlayStation 4. That's another good thing about this game and pretty much every Sony port. In their original state, they were built to run at 30 frames per second because they were made for the PS4. Spider-Man Remastered does have some graphical improvements, including running at 60 FPS, which is great, but in its like first form, its core form, it was built to run at 30 frames per second. So other games that are envisioning 60 FPS, when you drop them down to 30, you kind of get weird animations sometimes and it just doesn't feel right, but Spider-Man was tuned to run at that frame rate. So dropping it down to 30 really shouldn't be as bad as it is in some other games. This game also continues a really cool trend that was started by Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrade, in which it not only was it verified before the game came out for Steam Deck, which is great, it was also advertised to be verified by Sony and Insomniac. It's awesome to see these developers with huge AAA games excited to release their games on PC alongside the Steam Deck. They're like, yeah, this this thing runs on a handheld. Honestly, it brings me back to the first year of the Switch, 2017. I'll never forget it because the Switch came out on my birthday, March 3rd, 2017. Uh, a lot of developers around that time, when they got their games running on Switch or indie game developers, most of all, they would get their game on Switch and they would put out a trailer, basically saying how excited they were to see their game on a Nintendo handheld, or at least a handheld in general, because people were excited to play it. So to see developers doing the same thing with the Steam Deck, that basically tells me they're excited because people are excited to play games on the Steam Deck. And this also pairs super well with Valve's big initiative to make sure that everyone who ordered a Steam Deck is going to get it by the end of this year. Things are really just stacking on top of each other in a cool way, and the dominoes are falling in a good way for the Steam Deck, and the word is getting out there that this thing is worth owning and worth buying. I actually just replayed Spider-Man, so I don't think I'm gonna pick this one up at launch. I might wait for a sale because I bought this game on PS4. I also bought the ultimate edition of Miles Morales that came along with Spider-Man Remastered. So I don't need to buy this at full price just yet, but the game I will be picking up today after work that I'm really excited to try out is Cult of the Lamb. And the final news story I have for you guys today is about the Steam Deck update, the newest one that came out and brought along a ton of great features. For the most part, it's really good. It doesn't have a lot of issues, but one issue is with the graphics driver. A lot of people noticed immediately when they updated that they started to get degraded performance and 
games like Red Dead Redemption 2, whereas before they were able to basically run it maxed out at 30 frames per second. But now with this new update, it was regularly dropping below 20 frames per second and remained unplayable. Thankfully, Valve responded almost immediately and said they're looking into the issue, but I've run into this issue with multiple other games as well. One being Alan Wake, which is super irritating because of course the remastered version of Alan Wake is an Epic Game Store exclusive, which is total bullshit in my opinion, by the way, because Alan Wake, it's an old game. I'm playing the original version on Steam that I've owned forever because uh, Epic Games got the exclusive on the remaster, which even it, even though it looks pretty good, it takes out a lot of the atmosphere. So the remaster honestly isn't that great. I just wanted to play it in the newest form. So seeing that it was locked down, not only to the Epic Store, but also uh, cannot be played in offline mode. I'm just gonna be real with you guys. That's it's a single player game that has no multiplayer. And I was so disappointed when I got on the plane to Michigan and I tried to boot that game up again and realized that it wasn't going to work because I was offline. Like do better Epic. If you're gonna lock these games down and make them exclusive, at least let them be playable offline. But yeah, getting back on track here, I tried out this update while it was in beta with Alan Wake and I tried the same game before I had this beta update and it was running fine. But with this beta update, it was causing micro stuttering. Like every few seconds, I would get a big stutter spike. No matter what settings, no matter what frame rate, no matter what hertz I had the thing set at, I could not figure out the stuttering. So the last ditch thing I tried was switching back to stable and that fixed the game completely. And it looks like that micro stuttering issue made it into a lot of other games. Now, thankfully, Valve has seemingly figured out the fix for this and you can actually get it right now by updating your Steam Deck to the preview beta, which is like the most experimental beta. It's got the most untested features in it. So I went ahead and I updated to that preview. I'm gonna recommend you don't do that right now. It fixed a lot of the issues I had with Alan Wake, but in turn, it also broke a lot of other games for me, like Resident Evil 5, for example, is a game I'm playing through. The game is kind of tricky to set up, but once you get it going, it works fine, but not in this new preview update. So that's super irritating. So for right now, just avoid Red Dead Redemption 2. I guess Alan Wake and any other game that has micro stuttering and at least wait for this new feature that comes along with the graphics driver to be added to the regular beta version, not just the preview one. I just think the preview one is a little too far out there in terms of wild performance and instability. One issue I'd really like them to take a look at in the future though is loading stutter. No matter how well a game is running, a lot of times when you enter a new room, this has been happening to me like crazy in Psychonauts 2, there will be one big frame time spike and you can see it if you use the level two version of the frame rate counter where you get the graph, you can see when you enter a new room, start a new level, switch to a cutscene, there will always be a big frame time stutter. And it's super irritating in some games like Psychonauts 2. I see it all the time in that game. And no matter what settings I use, it doesn't go away. And the issue gets even worse in that game when you enter a new room. Sometimes the audio will crackle. And the only way I've been able to figure that out is by switching to 30 FPS at 60 Hertz. That's the only way. If I do 60 FPS at 60 Hertz, it's super irritating because you also get the crackle. 40 FPS at 40 Hertz, you also get the crackle. So they gotta figure out the crackle. They gotta figure out these loading stutters. It happens in pretty much every game I play. I've looked on Reddit and some people have been talking about it and they think it's tied to the fact that the CPU and GPU kind of fight for resources in some games if you leave the frame rate unlocked, but I've tried leaving it not unlocked and it still causes these weird audio crackles and stutters. Uh, so yeah, I'd like Valve to take a look at that in the future. The only reason I'm complaining about it here is because I've complained about stuff in videos before and then like three days later they get fixed. But yeah, huge shout out to JSOX for sending over more stuff. If you guys wanna see me check out any other Steam Deck accessories, let me know down in the comments below.